Welcome back, everyone, to 12 News at 430. I'm Tram Mai, along with water safety advocate Dave Muncie and also longtime weatherman. You have always been so passionate about water safety. It's been a long time, uh, of course. My passion came from the death of a young child that was very close to the family. That's generally how people get involved in this. Yeah. And uh, once you know the tragedy of losing a child or a friend, uh, it, you get involved. Right. It, it, it gets very important. And it affects you personally. Absolutely. Yes. It goes out so far, it's unbelievable how many people are touched from drowning of one child. And sadly, we hear it every single year, not just when it gets into summer, but really leading up to it. And already we know that several kids have already drowned under the age of five, and it's only April. So that is why we are dedicating up until 7 o'clock out here at the YMCA in Ahwatukee to teaching you and educating you about water safety. I want to bring in Bianca from Phoenix Children's Hospital. Bianca, we were talking earlier about these life vests and how important they are. And I want to bring in the floatables and all those toys and everything like that because it really doesn't substitute for this. Nope. Uh, these are just toys, and I want you to look at them as just toys. This is a life jacket, U.S. Coast Guard approved, best sell life jacket, is a safety device, and this is what's recommended. Uh, we're all guilty about having the toys, right? It makes it more fun. Right. So, so here's my question. If this is not supposed to be a substitute for this, why do so many parents, why do so many people buy this? You see them all the time at water parks, everywhere. They're common. They're, by, they're, they're on the shelves everywhere, you know, every single store, uh, you'll find them. Also, they have little characters. They're fun. You think they're going to grab this one or this one here, right? So even I just want to show this. This is, doesn't even have a U.S. Coast Guard approved label on it. So just make sure uh, to know, and when you look at it, I mean, we, we went over what to look for in a U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket, so look for that. Yeah. These two, you know, this is super cute, right? I even had one for my twins, okay? But what do people need to know? These are just toys, okay? Again, I just want to emphasize that toys and even life jackets never replace supervision, okay? So we are going to have these pool noodles. We are going to have these for, for the infants. Just remember, it never replaces supervision. Vision. It's just toys. Just before you go leave the pool, make sure you take them out of the pool, right? Because then what's, gonna, what's your infant? Exactly. Your infant's going to look at it, and they're going to want to go back in the water. So make sure you remove all the toys before leaving the swimming pool. That is such a good point. Yeah, because they think, oh, I want to go and reach for it. And then, boom, take seconds. They're in the water, and that's it. Yes, especially those little ones that go all the way to the bottom of the pool. They're going to want to go in there and grab them. So true. All right, Dave, I know you're with Matt over there from Gilbert Fire. Take it away. Well, we would like to talk to you a little bit about these uh, uh, wonderful gifts the children have so much fun with in the pool. They love them, of course. But what's the difference between a toy and a personal flotation device? Well, just like Bianca said, you know, they need to be Coast Guard approved. So what we see off time and time again is, well, they had a flotation device in the pool with them. And it's one of these float inflatable rafts. It's a beach ball that they're holding on to. The thing is, is that that's not secure to the child. So they're going to be holding on to that. They get distracted. They're going to slip off. The, the raft or the beach ball and then they're free floating in the water and they're not able to get back to that flotation toy and again it this is, this is not a substitute for a device but if you put a u.s coast guard approved life jacket on your child we saw some of them they're kind of funky they've got great colors they're made for kids they look great if they have one of those then they could play with the toys as well they can play with it but it's not a substitute so they can have it in the water with them but they need to have that coast guard approved device especially if there's not any kind of direct supervision, which there always should be, but U.S. Coast Guard approved life vests is the standard, and that's what it needs to be at all times. So when kids are learning to swim, when they are in the pool, when they're around the pool, when they're around the lake or the river, Have they the should all be... Absolutely. U.S. Coast Guard approved. Have the device. It is not a substitute for supervision. You know, kids are quick. They're sneaky. They're going to take that off. It might be uncomfortable to them. It might not look aesthetically what they want it to look like, but ultimately that doesn't matter when the lives are on the line. And when they say U.S. Coast Guard approved, basically what they're talking about is it keeps your head floating. Absolutely. There's not going to be any risk of them slipping underneath the water or having any kind of a submersion incident. So the parents, if you want to feel safe, the safest you can feel is you want to put your kids into a personal flotation device. Absolutely. They are not a substitute for toys. Okay. Try. You know what? You, I also want to mention real quick before we go about the importance of, you know, we keep talking about the pools and everything like that. But Dave, you know, 
Kids can drown in as little as, what, two inches of water. Yes. I mean, in the bathtubs. Absolutely. You see it all the time. Absolutely. What Absolutely. is your message? Well, never leave your kid unsupervised in water. It doesn't mean running the bath, placing your child in the bath, and then running downstairs. I get it. Parents are busy. You've got stuff going on downstairs. If you're running that bath, the child is in the bath. If there's an inch and a half of water, you need to have eyes on the child. You need to be in that bathroom. Because what happens is, especially with smaller children, heads are heavy. They reach for the toy. They tilt down. They're not able to have that strength to pull themselves back up, and their mouth is submerged underneath the water. Yeah, and I was even reading that the biggest age range for kid drownings is between the ages of one and four. And out of that, two out of three kids actually drown the most in bathtubs. Absolutely. Bathtubs, so buckets of water, toilets. Close your toilet lids, have locks on the toilet lids. Kids are tricky. Like I said, they're going to get into those things. They're attracted to water. Yeah. I also wanted to bring these up too. I found these nearby the pool. Again, toys that you want to get out of the swimming pool. You don't want your kids, your little ones to see this and try to grab them and then boom, they're in the water that fast. So again, for more information, go to our website, 12news.com slash waterwatch. For now, we'll toss it back to Lindsay.